make us one in your love. Bless our hymns and bless our prayers. Bless us as we gather here. Guide our lips to your feet. Lift our hearts to your voice. Good morning and welcome to worship. What a wonderful time of the year we are approaching spring and we have the wonderful paradox in this month both in nature and in the life of the church of that paradox between death and life. Jesus says in John chapter 12 the grain of wheat has to be buried first before it can rise again before it can burst out into life. And it is that deep, mysterious paradox of spring that we have in the Northern Hemisphere that falls so beautifully with the whole idea and the symbolism of Easter. We started with um, candle mass going into Lent and the image of the snowdrops. And then we are going to end with the coming of spring. Two S's, spring and snowdrops. But also we're reading from Isaiah chapter 53 where Jesus is the servant, the suffering servant who had to make a sacrifice and so he became our saviour. So we, we're moving between seven S's in this service, snowdrops, springtime, servant, suffering, sacrifice, salvation, Jesus the Saviour, because that's what the name of Jesus means. Yehoshua, he will save. It's not just a guess, he definitely will save us, of course. So I've been bold and brave in using visuals um, this morning in our service, with of course the wonderful help of Charlie, and um, I've really gone a bit overboard, but I hope you'll enjoy it, because to me this is a time of regeneration and life. So, with our very first hymn, In the Bowl There is a Flower, which Anne will sing to us, I'll use images of tulips blossoming from the ground. Now, ironically, tulips come from the Netherlands, and Lent comes from the Dutch word Lente, which means spring. We then move to the second hymn, to Sheila's, who will sing to us, Lord, make us servants of your peace. And I've used an image of the reservoir above Sutherland Grove, um, just sweeping across it, um, which portrays such a peace. And it was a beautiful sunny day when we've done the video. The third hymn then will be Christine with the Servant King. And for that I've chosen as a backdrop the spring crocus coming out of the earth and, and coming alive. Um, interestingly enough, the colour is purple, which was always the colour of a king. And then our very last hymn will be taken by Janet, and that will be Now the Green Blade Riseth. You know, the, the lovely words, Love will come again as wheat that springs up green. And that I will use the imagery of the two bulbs that we will see blossoming into life this month, the snowdrop and the daffodil. And hopefully on Easter Sunday morning we will have a beautiful cross um, bedecked with, with golden daffodils at Bendeloch Church. Our readings this morning will be taken by our good friends from the island of Col. Esther will read Psalm 53, and then Neil Morrison will read Jesus' uh, words in John chapter 12. So come and join us, and let us move into this mysterious but wonderful time of Lent as we move towards the sad crucifixion, but the joy of Easter Sunday morning where we can say he has risen, sorry, he is risen, he is risen indeed. Love will come again.
as wheat that springs up green. Come, join our service and please join us when we sing. Kate McKilliga from Iona wrote this prayer for Lent. Into the dark world a snowdrop comes, a blessing of hope and peace, carrying within it a green heart, symbol of God's renewing love. Come to inhabit our darkness, Lord Christ, for dark and light are alike to you, May nature's white candles of hope remind us of your birth and lighten our journey through Lent and beyond. Amen. Good morning. Goeiemorgen. I'm standing here in St. Oren's Church in Connell and I'll focus the camera on one of our stained glass windows. Please join me in a prayer. Father, we are here now to find your strength and we are looking up to you. Hold us safe under the shadow of your wings. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I am with you always. Be with me today as I offer myself to you. Hear my prayers for others and for myself and keep me and my loved ones in your care. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth, our friend and stranger. Jesus, you taught us to love our neighbour and to care for those in need as if we were caring for you, yourself. In this time of anxiety, 
Give us strength to comfort the fearful, to tend the sick, and to assure the isolated of our love and your love. Father, be close to those who are ill, afraid or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory and in light, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Merciful God, we entrust to your tender care all those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe, comfort and heal them, and restore them to health and strength. Gracious God, give skill, sympathy and resilience to all those who are caring for the sick, and your wisdom to those searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit, that through their work many will be restored back to health, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. from Isaiah chapter 53 verses 1 to 5 Who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness and when we shall see him 
there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Amen. John chapter 12, verses 24 to 26. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it into life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honour. Amen, and thanks be to God. i
serving, suffering, sacrificing, saving. Springtime, snowdrops, and maybe a surprise, maybe many surprises. We're going to work on these seven S's. But we start out with Isaiah chapter 53, where Jesus is portrayed as the Messiah coming, but in a different way that the Jews expected, for he will be a servant, a suffering servant. And in every one of our hymns today, we use the word of Jesus serving and calling us to serve. And this word is absolutely crucial to understand. It comes from the old word that literally means to serve a table, like we would have a waiter serving a table, or in, in, in the old world, the mother serving the table, bringing nourishing food to a family, a loved ones, or even the stranger who comes to the house. Serving, putting the best you can offer on the table, so that others may be nourished. This is crucial to understanding the work of Jesus. For in the serving Jesus, I see the Jesus washing the feet of his disciples, giving everything he has, uh, always humble, suffering, yes, sacrificing, yes, but always being the Saviour. For the name Jesus, Yehoshua, means he will save. And it's written in a very definite way. He will save for sure. He will save us for sure. That's what his name means. But he will, in his serving, suffer. And it is a sacrifice. Serving, suffering, and to sacrifice. And this is how we move through this month, the month of eventually up to Easter morning, where he is risen. He is risen indeed. We will shout with joy because he is saving the world. He is bringing through the winter of the history of the world the saving grace of springtime. What a wonderful month. What a deep, mysterious paradox that the Son of God had to serve, to suffer, to sacrifice, to die, but also to be risen and to save all of us. Yes, Jesus brought to this world of us, ours, the joy of spring, the eternal spring. I believe that winter never has the final word. Our very last hymn rings, Love is come again as wheat that springs up green. And that's the story of Jesus bringing the love of God into our lives, ending our eternal winters <clears throat> to bring us always spring again. So to me, this is not a grim and doer month. It is something joyful. And therefore, I choose, chose all those examples of bulbs and seeds under the ground, but rising up, bursting into life. And we should focus on Christ bursting into life in this month. And that's why I want to tell you again the story that I've written in Art Hatton's um, church magazine, the printout. The story of a little boy uh, who planted snowdrops. Now, his father was a minister in Warwick down in England, and his father had a big church. Inside it was warm and comfy like this one with stained glass windows, but <clears throat> Unlike this one on the outside, it was Grimmendur and it looked quite intimidating. It, it wasn't a welcoming sight from the outside. So this little boy decided to bring his talent, his very special talent, to the fore. For this little lad, and I, I've forgotten what his name was, had what we would call green fingers. Everything he planted just came up, just burst into life. And he decided, I'm going to do something special to my daddy's church. And right in front of the church, as people look up to the church, he planted lots and lots of snowdrops. He carefully, in late January, took the bulbs out of 
the ground at, at the manse, brought them over to the church, planted them, made sure they will rise. And that was, I think, in January he did that. And come springtime, February, our time of Lent, suddenly there were lots and lots of snowdrops. And the church looked beautiful from the outside. But we live in a harsh world. And someone came along and trampled all these snowdrops. Um, maybe it was children playing, maybe it was somebody just being really nasty. And it broke the little boy's heart. When he came up, all his snowdrops were crushed, broken. And yes, it broke his heart. For a whole year after that, he refused to plant anything. He didn't want his heart broken again. So it was a time of, of suffering for this wee lad. But spring always brings a surprise, and there is S number seven. Because winter passed, and when it became spring again, one day he walked up to church, and what did he see? Twelve snowdrops out of the earth, waving in the breeze in front of the church. Twelve, the biblical number, the twelve disciples, the, the twelve tribes of Israel, and he suddenly saw the significance that what was under the ground, the bulbs he planted, with the warmth of the sun's love, became snowdrops again. I find so much inspiration in this story of the snowdrops, because this is the month of the snowdrops. And on Easter Sunday morning we hopefully will see all the daffodils, and yes, we are going to have that cross up outside Bendeloch Church, St. Modens, uh, filled with, with beautiful golden daffodils. But now is the time of the snowdrops. It's the time of life, even though we can't see it beyond. And to me, I want to bring this message to myself and to you. Winter never has the last word. COVID-19 will not have the last word. For deep under the ground buried is the promise of God's presence, which came in Jesus Christ, who served, who suffered, who sacrificed, but also who saved. In Jesus we found spring eternal. I look at the church I'm standing in, St. Orange in Connell, what a beautiful church. And I'm so excited about the time we can open this church again. We often talk about church within walls and church without walls. I think there is space for both. And in both areas we will see snowdrops sprouting up, more than 12 snowdrops. I believe that when we open our churches again, many more people will come to church. Perhaps this has been a sobering time of realizing how fragile our human existence is. Perhaps a time that forced us to look up again and find our strength in God who created life himself. Love is come again like wheat that springeth green. And I believe that will happen with our churches on a Sunday morning. You will be surprised. We will see snowdrops jumping up where we never expected it and I believe the church will have its rightful place again as the right place to start your week on a Sunday morning the day that Christ rose from the grave. But I also see snowdrops growing all over outside our church, not the church garden but in our communities, our parish. So many new challenges have come open for the church. Our video services, we, we had to do them, we had nothing else that we could do. But what an adventure, what a journey this has been. How it has shaped my mind to even shape our church services again. Um, bringing in much more visual material, more singing and less preaching. My sermons will be shorter so we can fit in more music. Music for young and old. Music perhaps using the beautiful images we've used. Charlie, thank you for that. And all our singers, our musicians, 
so much talent in our parish, in our community that came forward. And we will carry it from the church, of course, back into our communities. Let us find new ways of being a church. The idea of having a church cafe, maybe, perhaps, uh, that's totally different, focusing on visual material sometimes in the week. But also the idea of God's snowdrops springing up everywhere, the church becoming more actively involved in community efforts, like just helping people, lending a hand, doing God's work the way Jesus did. For Jesus was not confined to the temple, he moved beyond. And yes, our Sunday morning will be the start of a magical journey into spring. We will be surprised. You will see snowdrops jumping up everywhere, I have no doubt. For it is the sun's love, the warmth of the sun, that brings life to our world. So let us make this a time of joyful expectation. Let us move through the idea of serving, suffering, sacrifice, because there's a purpose to all of this. Salvation, new life in Jesus Christ. Love is come again like wheat that springs up green. Amen.
keep you. The Lord turn his face toward you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.